All right. Hello, hey guys. guys. We are back. We're going to try together. We'll see how it goes today, but we've had some technical issues with recording together <laughs> since the We're quarantine started. Pros, not tech pros. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, I'm pretty techie pro for the most part. It's internet you really are. problems. Yeah. But, we are very excited to be back together. It's way more fun to do the podcast with a friend. Yeah. So <laughs> way more fun. And we're excited to be talking about this topic as well, mm -hmm. about homeschooling through hard times. And so, yeah, we're going to dive right in. We're on episode number 53 of homeschooling through hard times. So let's see, let's talk about hard times are inevitable. There are, they're going to come always like I, one thing i can guarantee you <laughs> is that eventually you will have a hard time whether that it's a new baby sickness um death loss of a job new move and yes a full-blown pandemic <laughs> isn't it fun <laughs> yeah it's yeah. wild to say the least yeah and life's gonna throw a lot of rough things at you and right now is a stressful time for sure for so many people there's a lot going on that is overwhelming a lot of people there's people losing jobs there's people sick we're stuck at home and getting sick of each other um, or just sick of your houses maybe yeah. yeah it's it's a tough time for sure so we want to just talk about some tips and um, managing this hard time as homeschoolers and we're still kind of figuring it out too but um, we always come at it with different perspectives so we can share some different ideas for you guys yeah I think let's start with Karen's kind of perspective I like that and I think it's gonna speak to a lot of people all right so well I have um, I'll, I'll be honest I've been struggling emotionally <laughs> um, it's just been overwhelming for me and I think I probably read the news too much and I need to stop that Megan and I were talking about that before we started about sometimes just checking out from what's going on for a little bit helps you just sort of gain your perspective again but um, I've been seeing a lot of posts and memes and things about how right now is a really good time to be learning a new skill and to be coming out stronger and better and um, you know, an accomplished pianist or learning the guitar or a new language or whatever it may be. And so I, I kind of had that perspective at the beginning. Oh, we have all this extra time, right? What are you going to do and how are you going to be better at the end of this? And um, it was sort of getting me down after a while, realizing that it wasn't happening. And I felt like our school had kind of um, screeched to a halt, at least for the first week, which is funny because our routine isn't really that different. And everyone was like, oh, you've got this down. It's easy for you. You guys were already homeschooling. I'm like, yeah, you'd think, right? <laughs> but for me and my kids and my husband, all of us kind of emotionally were struggling with it and just how to um, cope with the stress of what was going on. And I read an article a week or two ago, and it was perfect timing for me because I was having a really rough day and I had kind of broken down to my husband emotionally about how I was, you know, stressed out and sick of being cooped up and and it was from a trauma psychologist. And I thought it was really interesting. And he talked about how um, this is a really traumatic situation. And whether or not um, you have someone in your family sick, or you've lost your job, or whatever may have happened, which none of that is happening to me and my family, um, it's still traumatic. Things are different, and things have changed, and our world is changing, and it's really uncertain right now. And so if you feel overwhelmed and if you feel heavy and if you it feels hard it's okay to just take a step back and to just um, let that hardship be there and to not worry you about not doing enough right now or um, I don't know not not getting everything done that you were before and so I, I it felt really good for me when I read that because I was suddenly like okay you're right this is traumatic and this is hard and our world is changing and and I have felt really heavy and I, uh, I'm getting emotional. I, I internalize things. <laughs> I get emotional when things are hard, when things are hard for other people, not just for me. And so seeing all this and seeing the hard things that other people are going through has weighed heavily on me as well. And so I think that's why it's been so hard for me and my kids are sensing that as well. And so school has been a little different for us lately. It's been a little slower, it's been a little less organized, and it's been kind of a little more unschoolish 
which I've never really done. I've always been very structured in our home. And I was feeling a lot of guilt about it at first, but I, I'm not anymore and I'm realizing it's okay. It's okay to, to, to just calm down and take a step back and just snuggle on the couch and read a lot instead of you know doing the regular curriculum lessons and things that we are typically doing. Um, anyway, yeah. you have it. <laughs> no, I think that's great. And it's so interesting because like then I haven't been, every now and then I get all worked up and worried right? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I love having all my family home. Oh, I love I, that too. Yeah. So and much. Having all my teenagers around, because sometimes I feel like I don't see them as much because even with homeschooling, they still have jobs and they hang out with their friends and they're into their own stuff. And, and classes so, outside of home. and different yeah, things, yeah. The, yeah. Or seminary and all these different mm -hmm. church activities and all these different things that I'm like, oh, <gasps> I kind of like quarantining. <laughs> I actually have loved it in a lot of ways too. We've had so much more time with my husband, which he's mm -hmm. not home a lot normally and it's been so good for us and family dinner together a lot more often with all yeah. of us there. Um, it's yeah, in some ways it's been so great and I've been so grateful for that closeness that we have been developing during this time. It's been really special. Yeah, and so it's interesting, like um, I almost think, should I be more worried? Is it okay? You know what I mean? Like, as you see other people crying and, and uh, doing some really beautiful, amazing service. And I'm like, I'm having a party over here. Like, <laughs> am I a bad person? Right. And so it's interesting that you swing either way. Like, oh, is it bad that I don't really feel like doing school? Is it bad that like, I'm loving school right now? And so, like, I think this episode is really like, no matter where, how you feel about this, it's okay. Yeah. Like if you are like, you know what? School is going to be the basics. I'm going to hold you and tell you, I love you. And I'm going to read one book to you. And that's all I got. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't have anywhere to be in the afternoon. I don't have to take anybody anywhere. We're going to bring out the arts and the crafts. We're going to bring out all <laughs> the stuff that I've kind of let fall to the side uh, because I felt that I got to get up and we got to do school and we have to do all these things. And, um, I work a couple of days, so I don't really plan things on the, the days I work, but then the other days it's like, I have grocery shopping to do and I have kids to take places. And without all that, I'm like, oh, I love homeschooling again. Like <laughs> it's ignited a passion under me yeah. again of different fun things that I used to do with my big kids that now with the next batch of kids, I've gotten complacent. Yeah, I get that. And actually we're doing the fun things, but less of the structure things, if that makes sense. Yeah. We're doing a lot of arts and crafts and we love doing science experiments and things like that. Those are still happening, but it's more the structure of the lessons that we're struggling with. We're struggling with keeping our structure, which is so funny. I don't know why. I, I don't know why it's funny, but it, it has been a really um, bonding time for our family, and we've been able to delve deeper into religious studies that we haven't in other ways because we've seen a lot of, you know, parallels with last days, times, and things like that from the scriptures that we're wanting to study more, and that's been really cool for us as well. And and it's also something that brings us a lot of peace to be able to, you know, pull out the scriptures and study those and see, okay, you know, the Lord's going to bless us, and we're going to be okay through these hardships, whatever comes at us. You know what's been fun is I've talked about this before, but we've been reading Little House on the Prairie mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, how their chickens or their, how dependent they are upon their crops or things going on in their lives. And so it's been fun as we, we've gotten more chickens and I had got my bees back again and we've been planting in the garden. I'm like, oh my gosh, we are just like Laura Ingalls. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it's been fun that that was the book we've been reading, doing, using as a read aloud. We're on the banks of Plum Creek. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, it's, I don't know, it's been exciting. Like, okay, could, can we live off um, our food storage? Could we live off our garden? Could we live off of these things instead of just running down the street? Within two, let's see, a mile, I can go a mile north to one grocery store and a mile south to another grocery store. Now I'm like, only go if we have to, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is neat. It is making me realize we need to be more self-sufficient in a lot of ways too. And that's been interesting yeah. to, to see where we're at on that. I got to listen to a really neat podcast episode the other day of Brene Brown, and she was interviewing, I don't remember his name. He's a doctor. And he talked about 
it's all about emotions and please forgive me that I can like look it up in just a second and tell you what the actual name is of it, his name, but she has her new podcast and, um, let's see, it's Dr. Mark Brackett and on permission on permission to feel is his book. Mm. And, um, really interesting. And I've enjoyed her podcast too, as it just came out and, uh, talking about learning to lean into all the feelings. Like this is, nobody know there's no how to guide like hey i've survived a pandemic like when we share tips with you it's like oh yeah we've we've homeschooled with a newborn here are some things that work we've homeschooled with multiple children here are some things that work we've homeschooled with this or with that and with well, these now different we can add pandemic to our list yeah now we can <laughs> add it to our our resume but like it's a guessing game nobody mm-hmm. knows how to handle a pandemic right you have experts arguing with experts like this is the right way no this is the right way so instead of worrying about all that just learning to lean into all the feelings feeling anxious feeling scared feeling nervous and i had i was talking with a client the other day and we we talked about this fun activity you can do with your kids so i wanted to tell you guys about it of learning why we want to feel all the feelings so if you've ever, ever heard the analogy of if you have your emotions and they're like a beach ball and if you try to stuff them down under the water, right? What happens with a beach ball that you try to hold under the water? Pop back up. up. So now think about it. So have your kids, you can do it in the kitchen sink or fill it up in the tub. Or if you have like a little pool outside, we actually have warm weather right now. So that's been mm-hmm. lovely. So you can hold this beach ball under the water and you can probably hold that beach ball under the water for a while. So you could write on the beach ball, different feelings that you're feeling that might be a negative emotion, right? Like anxiety, depressive, depression, um, scared, nervous, all these things right under the beach ball. And now you're going to have a kid hold it under the water. So you can probably hold it there for a while. But what happens is we hold those emotions in and try to shove them down. Then other people and life starts happening. So you could have somebody come and tickle you. You could have somebody whisper in your ear. And they normally, if you weren't trying to hold the beach ball, you could respond to how, it, how you would want to respond. Like, ah, don't tickle me. Ah, get out of my ear, right? And it wouldn't be a big deal. And it wouldn't end in a way that you don't want it to end. But if you're trying to hold the beach ball and people start tickling you and start um, nibbling at your ear or doing whatever, that beach ball is going to pop up. And that's when you're going to yell, um, explode. Um, storm off if you had a kid that storms out of the room right like everybody hates me and runs out of the room and slams the door right that's never happened (laughs) oh no no (laughs) Um, but kind of showing like if we just have the beach ball and learn how to feel it and then you let it go what happens if you were were in an ocean with a beach ball you grew up in Florida right Mm -hmm. what would happen with that beach ball if you were in the ocean and quit touching it well it would float away it would float away yeah. And so learning how to feel the feeling and just feel it like feeling anxiety right now is not going to hurt you. Right. Mm-hmm. It just like, you don't like the way you feel. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, and we always want to feel good. Right. But actually learning to be just discomfort, how, lean into that discomfort and be uncomfortable instead of shoving that beach ball down. So yeah. I wanted to do, I have my book I've talked to you guys about on my website. It's fight, flight, or freeze. But I wanted to go with through the acronym with you of to stop and take a breath. So if you get all worked up, you could, this is what you can teach your kids. And honestly, it's for yourself too, let's be honest. Like, because we are very human as well. So if you take the, the B, right? You stop and take five d- big deep breaths. Like, okay, I'm feeling very anxious. So I'm going to do five deep breaths. And then the R, I'm just going to relax, right? I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to put on nice music. I'm going to make myself comfortable and relax. Then I'm going to sit with the emotion and I'm going to name it. This is what's really great with your kids is to get a page of emotions. And instead of just like, I feel happy, I feel sad, but really being able to name it. And I I Google searched it and it had like underneath sad, it had a bunch of different, oh, I turned it off, sorry. It had a bunch of different words like a thesaurus basically, right? Mm -hmm. For different ways to feel these, all these other emotions. So being able to name that emotion, um, then articulate, what does it feel like? Or where do you feel it? Right? So maybe you feel like a pounding in your head. Maybe you feel a heaviness on your chest. 
a knot in your stomach. Um, some people it's in your arm. Just where do you feel it? Shoulders. Yeah. Tightness in your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Right. And then T is just time and you just sit with it like, Oh, hello, anxiety. I feel you in my shoulders. Okay. We're just going to sit with you to take some time. Right. So right now you're just, you're looking at the beach ball and you're holding it and you're acknowledging you're like, Oh, that's what you feel like. Oh, that that's what I'm feeling right now. And then you can let it go. And the H is a be a hero, right? Because now you get to show up how you want to show up and you just let that emotion go and you can hold on to it as long as you want. Right. And then you just let it go when you're ready to let it go. Yes. So that's on my website, a free download. It's a little cutesy book and it just kind of helps walk them through like, uh, okay, you're go. feeling a strong emotion right now. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. For a minute. Megan's also um, leading a group on Facebook, No Yelling Mamas. Oh, yeah. We did the yell, <laughs> No Yell, <laughs> sorry, No Yell November. We talked about that um, a few months back, obviously November, but now she's just doing it um, again to help because a lot of people are feeling a lot of stress and anxiety right now, being cooped up in their homes with their family all the time. And so if you're struggling with that, with keeping your cool with your kids, you should definitely check out her Facebook group. She's got some really powerful information in there. Thanks. And I actually have decided to keep it an ongoing group. Um, so it just, it's been helpful. And I yeah. wanted to do something that I have no, like my sewing skills, you wouldn't want to wear a mask. I could sew a mask, but you wouldn't want to wear it. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I wanted to do something that would actually, I felt that could actually help other people. And I thought if I could help people in their home, cause I know depression, depression rates have climbed, mm -hmm. uh, domestic abuse has climbed, suicidal thoughts and tendencies have climbed. And so I thought if I can help something in a home that without yeah. actually having to be in their home. So that was a way I felt like that I could help during this time. Yeah, I think that's really good. So what about us and our feelings, Megan, not just our kids? <laughs> of being able to sit with them? Yeah, I mean, you, okay, so if you're telling me to sit with my emotions, I'm having a lot of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what, does that, what does that look like to you? Like, what am I doing? I'm just allowing them to be expressed. I'm allowing me to feel them and not feel guilty about those feelings. Um, yeah. And so like giving yourself permission, like yeah. I feel anxious and that's okay. Like I feel scared. And I think one of the powerful ways to really get this out, it's great to work like one-on-one. -on -one. If you and I were like divulging it, I'd be like, yeah. can't spill your guts to me. Like yeah. tell me all the thoughts going through your mind, but you probably don't want to do that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a book. A little more actually, <laughs> but uh, to journal. Oh. And I have found that self journaling every morning I get up, I not every morning, most mornings I get up and I try to read something spiritual. Um, I'm reading mere Christianity right now. And I then I journal book. and I just let my thoughts go wild. Like I, I do, I, I feel bad that I'm not worried about coronavirus. Am I heartless? Like, does that mean I'm a bad person? And right. And like, you let it go through and then you can kind of talk yourself through it. Like, no, sometimes it's okay that like now I can be a solid source for other people who are feeling nervous mm -hmm. that like, and allow you to feel nervous and say, and that's okay too. And I, it's okay that I feel calm and mm -hmm. that I feel okay. And so journaling is a really awesome way to get out your thoughts onto paper. And then just think of if your daughter comes to you and it was like, mom, this is how I'm feeling. You're able to separate your emotions out of it and just being like, oh, that's okay that you feel scared. So when you journal it, you separate it from yourself and you're able to get a, an outsider's point of view, like, oh, this is why I feel anxious, and that's okay. There are people I love that uh, that could be affected by this. This could yeah. affect our economy. Like, yeah, there are real reasons to my fears, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna feel afraid for a little bit. That's good. So it's good. Stuff. It's a really great process. Yeah. So wherever you're at, whether you're calm like her or a little more anxious like me, which it's funny, I've never thought of myself as an anxious person, but. I'm doing, I, I really am doing okay. Like, <laughs> you do for an anxiety attack. I, I, <laughs> no, I really am doing okay. Um, but it has been just heavier on me than it has been on her. Um, wherever you're at, whatever your family needs right now, it's okay. And it's okay to feel it and it's okay to be there and to do what you feel is right in your home at this time. And it, your kids are not going to be behind at the end of this, wherever you are. I don't feel like we're not learning. I feel like we're still learning even where we're at and um, moving forward. And 
still progressing in ways that we need to right now. Um, and so I think that's important to just remember, you don't need to feel guilt, you don't need to feel stress or pressure about what your homeschool looks like right now during this hard time. Yeah, and just being able to like experience it all. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, you think about our grandparents' experience of de the depression mm -hmm. and how that changed them. And so sometimes I like to journal of how am, what, like, how am I gonna be changed from this experience? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stockpile toilet paper like a mad woman. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's co what's causing the problem. No, um, I really didn't. I'm cheesy. <laughs> no, no. But like, uh, I've already had a feeling that I should have been more prepared for food storage wise. Mm -hmm. And so there was a part of me that's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, this is something that I know when the shelves are full again, that I will slowly start mm -hmm. doing these things. Um, I know for me, I told my kids, we were talking and I said, I don't want to go back to the craziness that was our life. I didn't realize I had allowed it to become so busy. And so a way that I feel like that this could be for us, right? Instead of this quarantine or this pandemic happening to us, how it's happening for us, right? The bonding time as our family, mm -hmm. this closeness we're having. Um, but I want to keep the simplicity in my life. I've felt the same thing. There's so many things that I think I'd love to cut out now that... Yeah, I've had the same feelings. Yeah, I love it. We've been biking a ton as a family and running as a family and like, and my husband's going with us. Mm -hmm. And so even though we haven't been on a, like an official date, right? We are, we went on a huge bike ride yesterday and a big run this morning. And I go, oh, we are going on dates. Just, it looks different. It does, yeah. We actually went on a real date on Saturday, finally. It's like, I need to just be alone with you, hon. <laughs> so we went and drove through Mod Pizza and got some pizza and took it to a big outdoor grassy spot and ate it together alone. And that was it. <laughs> but we were alone for about an hour and it was great. And then went back home. <laughs> That's awesome. We have our motor home and it was supposed to be rented out over spring break, but the people obviously canceled. So we just had it sitting at the house. And so we went and snuck out there and watched a movie. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. But our kids found us and we're like, okay, abort, <laughs> abort. <laughs> yeah. So just during this time like yeah being okay that whether you're feeling whatever part of the spectrum you're feeling like i feel sad i feel scared i feel nervous like actually i feel okay i'm loving this time together be willing to feel it all mm -hmm. and not be afraid of it and just like this will eventually this will be a thing of the past eventually we'll be like our grandparents like back in my day we were quarantined with our kids <laughs> right <laughs> This will and we will come out stronger. That's the thing I love about whatever challenges come at us and that I've seen in my life, and I know you guys probably all have, is you come out the other end having more knowledge and more strength in different areas than you expected in your life, and they, it'll always teach you something, and it's always valuable in the end. Yeah. Okay, friends, we hope you are healthy. And we love you and we are here to support you, whether that looks like activities to do or just somebody to say, I, this is all I got. Is that okay? And we'll say yes. No matter what you tell us, we'll say yes. Like what you're doing is enough. Yeah. So stay safe and healthy and we love you guys. Bye-bye. See you later.